Hey good people, how's it going today? Hope everyone is doing well today. This is Coach Cookie, your life and relationship coach. If this is your first time listening, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like what you hear, please give the podcast a like, comment, and don't forget to share with your family and friends. To all my regular listeners out there, welcome back. And I want you to know that you're greatly appreciated. Here at Rising Higher, I'm going to give you some snippets for success to not only help you to survive, but to help you thrive. Now, in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to handle narcissistic abuse. But before we do that, let's talk about the high points from last week's episode called Dating After Narcissistic Relationship. In this episode, I've talked about how the victim is responsible for their own happiness, but based on my personal experience, it's much easier said than done. I've had over 25 years of personal experience being in narcissistic relationships, and I provided my listeners with my life story and the struggles that I had with narcissistic abuse. I talked about my healing journey and what it looks like when you're ready to start dating again. If this sounds like something that you want to learn more about, check out the entire episode. It's again, it's called Dating After Narcissistic Relationship. Now, to all my survivors out there from narcissistic abuse, I need you to learn how to regulate your emotions so you can stop going through the same trauma over and over again. You can do this. You got this. There are plenty of warriors out there who have healed on their own from narcissistic abuse. And I'm a witness. Right now, it's your time. Stop living in the past. It's time to celebrate your victories one day at a time and create new memories. This is how you'll be able to manage and regulate your trauma by creating new memories. Part of those memories will include who you will and who you won't associate with. As you heal, you will see the red flags and you will be able to identify the positive or the negative characteristics in people. You know, for example, you'll be able to know the voice of temptation or the voice of a warrior that's trying to help you. Go through your journey as a soldier so the people that you meet will treat you in the manner that you operate in. Don't allow that voice of temptation to whisper sweet nothings in your ear and take you through that desperate, savage cycle of narcissistic relationship over and over again. Don't do it. It's not worth it. It's not worth going backwards. Keep in mind that the reason you experience this abuse is to learn a lesson, not to keep repeating it. So you need to get out there and you need to heal from this narcissistic abuse so you can be an example for others. But while you're doing this, I want you to be careful because with this pandemic right now going on, the narcissist has has had to unmask themselves and they are desperate. Yes, they are desperate. So they're going to have to do some changes. They will have a new story to tell. They're going to have different ways to hoover. They're going to have a new smear campaign. They're going to have some new flying monkeys because they have to come in with a new voice, a new approach. So be strong and be careful and be ready for them when they come because they come in. Now to my soul, just be strong and stay on, on your healing journey so you can be strong enough to identify these targets from the narcissist when you hear them speaking or when you see them coming. Stop looking at what other people are doing because your combat style is going to be different. Do you and develop your own style and what you what you need to do so you won't be so easily provoked doing your healing journey. Just like when you go to different platforms to to listen to different coaches talk about narcissistic abuse and talk about their experiences. We all have different experiences because we are from different cultures. We're from different backgrounds. Uh, Some of us abused, were abused from for most of our lives, while others only had one experience from narcissistic abuse. So guess what? When we teach about narcissistic abuse, our stories don't sound the same. It's the same way when you're healing and fighting the spiritual warfare from narcissistic abuse. It's not going to look the same because your story is going to be different. Now, there have been soldiers that have gone through the same war. You know what I'm saying? Like World War II, World War You know, that type of thing, Vietnam War. But when they come out with different scars, they had different combat styles. When they got out the military, they had the same stripes and badges on their uniforms as all the other soldiers did. But they all had different stories to tell. 
Stay strong during this battle and don't invest in time with negative toxic people. If you've been with Coach Cookie for any time, you know better. And by now, you know how to control your space. You know how to control your emotions. Your battle scars are going to be different, but keep pushing through so you can share your experiences with someone else and how they can make it through this spiritual warfare called narcissistic abuse. We all have different styles when it comes to dealing with narcissistic abuse, but we have the same message. And we want you to come out on top so you can tell your story. God didn't create a quitter. Find your combat style while you're going through this healing journey called narcissistic abuse. And I want you to get out there and stump the devil on his head. Okay? You got this. So today on Keep It Real, I have a question from Sandra. And she says, hey, Coach Cookie, I have been really working hard on my personal healing I have heard people telling me different things when it comes to what I should and should not do when it comes to narcissistic abuse and how it will affect my healing. I want to know, is it okay to learn everything that there is to know about narcissistic abuse or will it ruin my healing process? This is a really good question and I believe, and and believe it or not, but people do think that if they know everything about a narcissist it would keep them from getting involved with that type of person again okay now the truth of the matter is that every moment that you spend researching and learning about narcissistic abuse make sure you are not denying yourself from healing from that abuse as well in other words it's okay to be educated about narcissists and their abuse. But this is in no way all that is required to keep the narcissist from coming back again. Think of it like this. Your doctor may give you a booklet about everything that it is that you need to know to prevent you from becoming a diabetic. And in addition to that, you do extra research about it as well. You can do all the research and studying about that topic But until you put what you have learned to work to prevent you from becoming a diabetic, it means nothing. It's the same thing for narcissistic abuse. Let me let you know from my personal experience, and I'm sure that thousands of other people will agree that if you don't use the tools and put in the work, you will definitely hook up with the narcissist again. Just as sure as you're gonna get diabetes, if you don't start putting those tools to work to keep you from getting it. So, no, I don't really feel like there is a problem with learning everything you can about narcissistic abuse. This is completely normal because most of the time, we as people become paranoid about who you may be, who may who you may date or who you want your new circle of friends to be like. Okay? What is going to keep you from attracting them is dealing with your past traumatic experience, which most of the time resulted from your childhood. I want everyone to keep in mind that knowledge is not what is going to keep you from attracting these people. This is one of those examples where knowledge is not necessarily power. It's just information because it is more than just knowing what is going on but you have to actually put into work when it comes to your inner subconscious programming yes until we heal from those inner wounds we will attract these toxic demons this is a great question i think you guys got it i think I, i i took you to school on that one yes the new self that you will become is the power you need to avoid these toxic individuals Anything less than that is just material on a piece of paper that you've read. If anyone out there has a question that you would like for me to answer or a topic that you would like for me to do an episode on, please go to my email address at heycoachcookie at gmail.com. Just that I just want you to know that if you have a question, I'm going to keep it raw. 
because I'm going to keep it real. Okay? Now, let's get into the main topic of the day. How to handle narcissistic abuse. Well, we are all capable of abuse when we're frustrated or hurt. Uh, We may be guilty of criticizing, judging, withholding, and controlling. But some abusers, including narcissists, take abuse to a different level. Remember that narcissistic personality disorder and abuse exist on a continuum ranging from silent to violent. Now, narcissistic abuse can be physical, mental, emotional, sexual, financial, or even spiritual. Rarely will a narcissist take a, take responsibility for his or her behavior. Generally, they deny their actions and abuse by blaming the victim. They aren't bothered by guilt. They can be sadistic and take pleasure in inflicting pain. The objective of narcissistic abuse is mainly power. These abusers act with the intent to diminish or even hurt other people. The most important thing to remember about intentional abuse is that it's designed to dominate you. Abusers' goals are to increase their control and authority while creating doubt, shame, and dependency in their victims. They want to feel superior to avoid hidden feelings of inferiority. Once you understand this, it can empower you. Think of it like this. Remember those bullies you went to school with? They were loud, they were defensive, full of rage and arrogant. Deep down inside, they weren't all that they were cracked up to be. But they had people afraid of them. But the reality is was that they were suffering from some type of shame. Their biggest fear is that they didn't want anyone to know that they were really weak and insecure. It's the same thing for the narcissist, which is another name or another word for the bully. Or we gonna think of it like that. A narcissist is a bully. It's essential not to take personally the words and actions of an abuser or a bully. Thinking on this level will make it easier for you to deal with a narcissist. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when dealing with an abuser is that they forget the abuser's motives and the victim reacts in an ineffective manner. So here are a few examples of what the victim should not do when dealing with a narcissist. Don't worry about appeasing or pleading with the abuser. If you do, it empowers an abuser and they see you as weak and an opportunity to, to gain more control. Don't argue or fight over the facts. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. Most abusers aren't interested in the facts, but only justifying their position and being right. Verbal arguments can quickly escalate to fights and drain and drain and damage you. Nothing is gained. You lose and you can end up feeling more victimized, hurt, and hopeless as a result. Stop trying to explain and defend yourself with the abuser. It does nothing but open you up to more abuse. Stop trying to seek some type of understanding. This is only based on the false hope that a narcissist is interested in understanding you that is not going to happen. The narcissist is only interested in winning a conflict and having the superior position. They may act tough. The narcissist are basically insecure inside. They're fragile. They can dish it out, but they can't take it. Complaining or criticizing an abuser can only provoke rage. Don't blame yourself for an abuser's action. You're only responsible for your own behavior. You will never be perfect enough for an abuser. So stop their behavior because that behavior stems from their insecurities, not you. When the narcissist comes to you, remember, they're bullies. They're really weak and are putting on a front like they are somebody. So we talked about what you should not do when dealing with the narcissist. Let's talk about what you should do when you're dealing with the narcissist. Stop allowing the abuser to damage your self-esteem. You need to learn how to be assertive without fighting or arguing. Let me say that one more time. You need to learn how to be assertive without fighting or arguing. Remember to stay in control at all times. You have to be able to stand your ground and speak up for yourself clearly and calmly. 
you must feel entitled to be treated with respect when it comes to your thoughts, emotions, and your body. You need to be strategic when it comes to what you want specifically, what the narcissist wants, what your limits are, and where you have the power in the relationship. This is where your boundaries come into play. Now, boundaries are rules that govern the way you want to be treated. People will treat you the way you allow them to treat you. You must know what your boundaries are before you can communicate them. This means getting in touch with your feelings, listening to your body, and knowing your rights. You need to be consistent with this process and develop courage. Expect pushback when you stand up for yourself. It's coming. Trust me, it's easier said than done. Been there, done that one. If this is something that you have been trying to do for a while, and you're struggling, if you feel you may need additional support during this process, go to my website at risinghigherlife.com and schedule a free consultation to find out if you could benefit from one-on-one coaching. If no one has told you guys today, I love each and every one of you, and I'm sending you all a big hug. This is Coach Cookie reminding you to love yourself first as we rise higher together. Be blessed, and I'll talk to you soon.